Hello there, Internet. Steve here with another Unity Asset Store review. Uh, today we are going to be looking at another Aquarius Max uh, asset. This one is also in the Aquarius Fantasy series. It is going to be the Fey Pack. Uh, this one retails at the time of recording this for $55 USD. Um, excuse me. Uh, let's just go over the ratings real quick. Uh, quality, just like always, it passes. Um, you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again, Aquarius Max does a really good job of cranking a, a you know, fair amount of fidelity into a, a fairly low poly um, and low tris uh, uh, a prefab. And they do a good job on the, you know, LODs and all that and some of those more technical details. So definitely gets a pass there. Uh, modularity and workability. Um, I'm, I'm passing it, but honestly, on this one, just barely. Um so we'll get into that so there's there's two demo scenes here we're going to just do a quick run through of those and then i'm going to do a run through of the the uh, prefab hierarchy um the big reason why i'm like just barely passing it is on on this but i am still passing it on this is um the like walkways and bridges and stuff are decently modularized but that is pretty much where it ends <laughs> none of the house structures are have any modular pieces from what i could find um and this well we'll we'll, we'll dive into that when when we get to it um support and serviceability just like always you know they give like they've been doing this for a while they understand the value of that and they're they're there if you need them so um, definitely give them a pass there and then value. Uh, yeah, for 55 bucks, I'm, I'm going to give it a pass. Um, you know, like I would really like to have seen more housing modularity. Um, and, and then it would have been, a an easy pass for me, but, um, you know, it, I'm still passing it, but, but again, it's just, this one's like just barely scraping by on that, on that, uh, value, you know, input as well, because some of the stuff in here too is not that dissimilar from some of their other packs. So they're not exactly the same, but it seems like there's, there, there's, there, there's a little bit of possible overlap. So anyways, Let's hop in to the first of the two demo scenes. We're going to be looking at the Enchanted Forest scene first. This is the smaller of the two demo scenes. Um, so these bridges and stuff, uh, actually, yeah, this first. So the bridges and stuff are, um, you know, easy to screw around with. There's this large, like, stub, and this is kind of a cool asset, uh, uh, kind of a cool prefab, honestly. Um, you know, you think of all the, just the classic Fae Forest. That's what this asset is supposed to, um, you know, uh, uh, replicate. And I do think it does a good job of capturing that, if I'm being completely honest. Like, I actually think it does a really good job of that. Um, so there's these logs with internals you can walk through and stuff like that. Um, so, uh you know, mushrooms, lots of, you know, shrubbery and uh, um, vegetation and, uh, you know, flora, stuff like that, that, that this pack is very heavy on that stuff. So um, there is that. So that, that's pretty much it for this demo scene, but we're going to hop out and go into the, um, into the, uh, home the homes demo scene here so this is a little more of a substantial demo scene um all of the build so the thing i will give them a lot of credit for this one is all the buildings do have interiors there aren't that many buildings so it's not like oh my god it's a huge feat or anything but all the buildings do have interiors from what i can tell there are these bridges um these are definitely um um uh you know part of the modularity end of it um so there's the fey elevator we'll just take this guy up here oh crap did i miss it i did miss it <laughs> it'll go back up all right so let's hop out here 
Yeah. Here's kind of so these bridge pieces and stuff, half of them are modularized, some of them are not. But these houses, you know, these Fay houses are all just one piece each. They're all static meshes. And I would have really liked to have seen some modularity there. Um, that I think was a massively missed opportunity by um by uh, Aquarius Max. Now, the beds and all the stuff that's put, like the tables and shelves that are populating inside of here, obviously those are not part of the meshes. Like those are all individual set pieces, clutter pieces, and we'll kind of dive into that when we go into the um, prefab files. Um, but yeah, all of them have interiors, uh, which I do like to see. It's just that there aren't there aren't really that many buildings to begin with. So it's not like a huge feat that, you know, oh, there's all these internals. So um, let's, so these bridges are all, um, so one thing that you should keep in mind as I'm running through here, like bear in mind, like the seeming variance of this, and this is part of why I gave it a, a big part of why I gave it a pass. Um, just bear in mind like how how unique some of this level is and then when we go into the fbx files you'll see why or the uh, prefabs rather you'll see why that is um why i i think you'll see why i gave it a pass on that uh these spiral pieces are all one piece um like this is not modularized so it's going to have to be like a specific height you could mix and match these i think but the problem you're going to run into is the tree base um so you kind of see the modularity there um let's hop there should be some ground houses as well yeah there we go there's some ground houses so there's the sky houses or the tree houses, but then there's a second variant for ground houses where it's there's no bottom to them. They're just they're just there. So let's so what when I started to say this before, and I said, ah, we'll just get to it when we get to it. Um, for some reason they took a little bit of a different approach with their folder structure. Um, Aquarius Max has traditionally been pretty good about keeping a, the same or similar folder structure. The FBXs are always separate from the prefabs and the materials and textures are separate folders. This one, they housed all that under the FBXs for some reason, I'm not quite sure why. It's just a, for me, it's like an OCD organizational thing that I like, why would you do that sort of thing? But whatever, um, that's not the end of the world. But so see, there's a decent amount of, um, you know, outdoorsy stuff, uh, vines and just other flora type things. Um, the mushrooms are obviously like very prominently featured because um, it's a faith thing. There's a decent amount of, you know, rocks, rock formations. Um, skip this one. So smaller plants and stuff like that. Um, all around just a decent amount of um, flora stuff. Um, a few different of these types of stumps that have interiors to them, the down stumps you're using for bridges and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so then you've got your platform trees, so you can probably see it from here, but these would be the trees that you use to like put individual houses and stuff on when we get to those prefabs. Um, oh, that's the one I was just in. <laughs> Then canopy trees, and then uh, you know more more stumps. Um, so let's go to uh, let's do the clutter first. So there's a decent amount of clutter stuff. Uh, you know, you probably all know this by now, but I'm a sucker for clutter. So you know, there's there's a decent amount of stuff in here. There there could be more, um, but I think for the you know for the for the price, I think it's a fair amount. Um, so you've got obviously the lighting and some of the, some particle effects and stuff like that, um, all pre set up for you. <clears throat> then we're getting into the structure. So you can see that the bridges are all like 
decently modularized in ways where you can you can create some kind of cool you know canopy um, canopy towns and stuff like that. Um, let me go to the houses last. Um, so then you're getting into your upright hollow uh, hollow structures. This one I think is the elevator, maybe, maybe. Yes, this one is one of the elevators. Um, there's a couple of them. Uh, then you've got, so remember I said that these were all one big piece and you kind of ran into a problem where like <laughs> you can yank these out, but like they, they don't have similar pieces to build on top of. So you you can do some stuff with this. It's just, I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more um, like a little bit more thought put into like, like maybe splitting these up into like a couple of pieces. You have this piece already, but like, like this piece was in the ramps, but you don't have some of these other pieces. So splitting some of that up would have been nice, but I, I don't think it's, I don't think that that's a breaking point. I do think that there's, there's still value there. Uh, and then just a couple of these. So let's go to the houses now um, because, oops, let's, uh, actually, no, we'll do this first. <laughs> um, so a few different bridges, uh, like opposite bridges in here as well. Um, you got your tree platforms. So these are the things that you saw uh, surrounding the trees uh and then uh, you know more baseboards and stuff like that um so there's a decent amount of these you can do some cool stuff with those um and then so here are some additional ramps but these again you can only do so much with them it's like they're it's like they're missing a couple of modular pieces to make that part of it like really great um, all right, now let's go to the houses. <laughs> so you've got ground level houses and tree level houses. So the ground level houses are the ones that are obviously, you know, meant to be on the ground. Um, there's a couple of different variants of them. Um, and this one specifically, it's hard to see well, down here. So this one is a ground level house that then you can put a tree level house on. Um, a couple of bigger ones like this. And then you've got, uh, um, you know, in the stump houses essentially uh let me find the there it is so the sort of in the stump house um you got another one of those here so then we have the tree houses uh so again there's the, like the, the i guess the the my 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 complaint about this part of it i guess is that there aren't a lot of them you know if you're gonna do static meshes then you know please give give more options i've been synth studios on these before and uh you know but i gave the simple polygon pack uh really really good reviews because they didn't do that um and obviously you can see from the hierarchy but the doors are independent so you can animate those whenever you want to um but yeah i i would have liked to have seen just like either give me the building pieces or give me more buildings sort of thing. Um, ultimately, you know, like I said, at the top of the hour, I do think this asset pack is worth the money. I, I just, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more. That's all. Um, other than that, you know, yeah, I think it's worth the value. Um, I, I think it barely skates by on the value. I think it barely skates by on the modularity, but I think it still passes those. So I think it's still worth it. Um, and like I said, with other ones, especially if you combine it with, uh, Aquarius Max's other asset packs, you can have a really cool, you know, set of, uh, fantasy prefabs to just build cool worlds with. Um, but, um, yeah, as, as a standalone, I wanted a little bit more out of it, but, but again, I, I think it's still worth the value. So, uh, if you let me know what you think in the comments, and if you have any questions or whatever, let me know, and I will see everybody in the next one.